What's going on, everyone? Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving weekend. I had a fantastic one here at home. Had the family come in. My fiance's sister and husband came into town. We had a great time with them. Just a great weekend overall. You know, good food, good company, all that stuff. Lots of friends over pretty much every night throughout the weekend. And I hope everyone out there had as great a weekend as I did. But today we're getting back to business with some Cyber Monday deals that absolutely butter my biscuit. I didn't do a Black Friday video this year because honestly the deals weren't that great. And I was really having to go far to find anything even remotely interesting to talk about since so much stuff stuff is out of stock. Uh, there was initially a deal on the 9900K, which I still run and is still a very good processor. That was for like, I think it had it for 229 But by the time I went to go shoot a video, it was already sold out. So we've got some stuff here today, a good mix of things, some tech stuff, some kitchen gadgets, all sort of like tech adjacent though, and some things that I use myself on a regular basis. So we're going to be getting fired into that, but also the sponsor of today's video is still running a Black Friday sale until December 1st, 30% off on software keys when you use JP30 at checkout with Super CDK. So after a brief ad read, we'll get into the Cyber Monday deals. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you can save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for just $19.50. And then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode on Windows 10 and uh, take advantage of that. I couldn't live without it. And if you shoot over there right now, you could save 25% off. Hit the Buy Now button and then put in my code JP25 at checkout. I'll walk you guys through the process right now so you can see how much money we're saving and how to go ahead and install this on your Windows 10 PC. That brings our price down to $14.62. Total of savings of almost $5 using that JP25 code, which will work for any software products over there. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on Submit Order and select your payment mode of choice, which for me personally is PayPal. And then I'll go ahead and complete the checkout by clicking on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and type in the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first deal on Cyber Monday, this one I was very happy to see. I didn't really see it recommended or anything. I had to kind of search it out, but thankfully it was on sale. Uh, and also this year marks the first time I've ever done a Black Friday or Cyber Monday deal video where I finally remembered to sign out of Amazon. So it doesn't show that thing on the right side that's like ship to so-and-so in this town and this zip code like basically doxing myself so i finally remembered to do that this year thumbs up to me i don't have to spend 45 minutes putting black bars over everything in my video editor so that's always nice but getting back on topic here first item up is the logitech g305 which i am using right here this has my been my main go-to mouse for i don't since it came out three years maybe four uh, I'm honestly not sure. I have I initially got the black one, then I got the white one. Last year for Christmas, my fiance got me the purple one, which I use with my uh, capture PC, so that's why I kind of have it handy here. Um, the black one my stepson now uses with his laptop, uh, and they've got a bunch of different color variants. I honestly didn't even know about this mint colored one, and they're all on sale for thirty bucks, regularly fifty. Which even at fifty, these mice are an amazing deal. The latency is almost non-existent. Uh, it is basically non-existent. You will not notice any difference with latency between this and a wired mouse, and in most cases, it's actually even faster uh, than a wired mouse using light speed stuff. The wireless technology over the last five years-ish has gotten absolutely incredible, and Logitech has sort of been at the forefront of that. And the G305, just for me, is an absolutely perfectly shaped mouse. Uh, I love the smaller size of it. It's fairly light. I think it's about 110 uh, grams, but you can reduce that if you use uh, a, a lighter battery, whatever those are called, <laughs> lithium, lithium batteries. If you get a lithium battery, you can replace that in there. It's a single AAA, I believe, if I 
open it up, I'll take a look. Uh, come on, open up, motherfucker. Uh, double A, a single double A battery uh, inside the compartment there. So you can, if you can reduce the weight on that, but the, the, a single AA battery on this will last a good six to eight months or so um, because it doesn't have any R RGB, which, you know, as far as an aesthetic thing is concerned, doesn't really add a whole lot to your setup, but they've got all the different color variants. As I said, black, blue, purple, mint, and white, and they're all in sale 30 bucks. And as of right now recording this, uh, they are all in stock. And some, for some reason, my mouse is picked up. There we go. Uh, it's because I dra dragged it onto the other screen. But yeah, that's one of the reasons I use um, this particular one and not one of the higher end models that have RGB because they have RGB, so they might look a little bit cooler. But guess what? The batteries don't last as long. You got to plug them in to recharge them rather than just being able to swap out the battery real quick. And I've had the, the batteries on these things go almost a year, honestly, um, without needing to replace it. I think I put this one in about six months ago and in the Logitech software, I still have full bars in there. So Logitech G305, cannot recommend it. Actually, it has the weight right there, 99 grams. So I was incorrect. It's 99 grams, and I believe it comes down about 10 grams if you go with a lithium ion. It's not going to be as light as those mice with the stupid holes in them. But honestly, I don't understand the whole point of having the lightest mouse in the freaking world. I want something that feels a little bit more weighted um, personally. And I think the G305 is pretty much the duck's nuts when it comes to wireless mice. And uh, yeah, there's a reason there hasn't been an update to it in a few years since it came out. It's because it's just that damn good. They don't need to do anything with it. Don't mess with perfection, Logitech. I'm considering buying like a dozen of these just so I can have them for the next 20 years of my life because I can't imagine a better mouse coming out than the Logitech G305 for my personal needs and my personal preferences. So highly recommend it. If you can grab one now on uh, Cyber Monday, 30 bucks, do it. Next up, a tech-adjacent gadget, uh, you might say, the Instant Pot. Uh, something I recommended last year on Black Friday, I believe, or Cyber Monday, one of those. Uh, I have the Instant Pot 8-quart model. It doesn't look as nifty as this one. This Mine is just the stainless steel model. This one's all black, which I actually really like. And uh, we use this all the time uh, for cooking. It's usually $130. Bucks. It's on sale for $80.00. Go ahead and pop it open right here so I can show you why I like using these things. Um, most people just kind of think of them as a pressure cooker, which can help you cook really tough cuts of meat. Um, you can get like a nice chuck roast and throw in a couple of seasonings. And really, and in just maybe 20, 30 minutes, you can have really, really tender fall apart meat that otherwise might take hours if you were to braise it slowly or put it in a slow cooker. Something along those lines. We, we make beef barbacoa with it. Um, Mississippi pot roast is a really good recipe. Very, very easy. It's like four things. You just dump it in. And in 30 minutes to an hour-ish, uh, you've got great food that you can go ahead and serve to people. Um, but also you can use it for slow cooker. I use this as my primary rice cooker as well. You don't need to buy a separate rice cooker. I put rice in here, equal parts rice and water. So like a cup of rice, cup of water. Um, I don't actually use the rice functionality on it. Um, because I find that it overcooks the rice because it cooks it for 12 minutes where if you just do pressure cook for 10 and let it slowly release the steam afterwards for an additional 10 minutes, the rice comes out absolutely perfect. But the rice functionality actually overcooks it a little bit, just overshoots the mark by two minutes. So I would recommend pressure cook on 10 uh, if you ever want to do that. Also has saute functionality, which is good if you are, like I said, if you want to do something slow cooked or even pressure cook, but first you need to like, there's maybe there's a few steps, like maybe you need to brown the meat and maybe saute the vegetables and sort of get things started like that before you go ahead and slow cook it or, or pressure cook it or braise or whatever. Um, so it's got that functionality in there as well. And then my other favorite one is sous vide. I actually have another Instant Pot, which is a big wide one, um, and that has the sous vide functionality, which is where I basically, you could take meats or anything, you could, we do veggies in there too, um, but steak is like probably the most well-known example where you take a steak, you season it up with salt and pepper, you put it in a food saver bag so it's sealed up airtight, and then you could set the, the uh, sous vide temperature on the Instant Pot with water in there to the exact temperature that you want. So say you want a medium rare steak, you set the sous vide to 135 degrees, and that steak will never go past 135 degrees. It just, it just physically can't because that's the temperature inside the Instant Pot. It takes about two hours but you have the absolutely most perfectly cooked steak you will ever have in your life. And then you just have to put a quick sear on it in a cast iron pan uh, or use a flamethrower, which is something I like to do. Also, sous vide veggie, veggies in there, incredible. The best corn on the cob you will ever have in your life because 
Once you boil corn on the cob, uh, it goes past a certain temperature and the pectin starts to break down in the kernels. I know a little bit about food. The pectin breaks down in the kernels and it loses a lot of its sweetness, which is why a lot of people put like sugar in the, in the boiling water if they're boiling corn. Whereas if you set it to 187 degrees, for the corn on the cob, the pectin never breaks down in the kernels, therefore you get natural sweetness and you don't really need to add anything else to it other than just, you know, butter and salt because, well, butter and salt is amazing. Also, hands down, the best fucking mashed potatoes you will ever have in your life. Two and a half pounds of peeled and cut up potatoes with half a block of, half a stick of butter, half a block of cream cheese, and half a cup of heavy cream and a teaspoon of salt. They don't even need gravy. My fiance fucking hates mashed potatoes and gravy and all that kind of American-y stuff. I love it personally. But the mashed potatoes that I make sous vide in my Instant Pot, best mashed potatoes of my life. We made 10 pounds of them uh, for Thanksgiving. I had to do them in batches, but I did them the day before. So I actually sous vide them the day before, took them out, mashed them up, and then put them back in a food saver bag. And then the next day we took them out of the fridge I put them in the sous vide on keep warm and they just stayed warm right until dinner. So rather than having to rush around on Thanksgiving and do like a hundred different things in the last hour to make sure the turkey and the stuffing and all the sides and the gravy and everything came out hot, I put the mashed potatoes in sous vide. I took my gravy that I made the day before as well. I put it in a huge mason jar and submerged that into the sous vide with just the lid sticking out and I kept that warm as well so it didn't sort of get all gelatinous and thicken up too much or me having to worry about it making hot gravy at the last minute made Thanksgiving so much easier. I am an absolute nut uh, for sous vide in general, but the Instant Pot products are great and they are a good entry into doing sous vide if you want to do that. So I know I'm nerding out a little bit here talking about this stuff. Let's get back to some more tech products, shall we? The Crucial Ballistics 3200 DDR4 32 gigabyte RAM kit is on sale for 119 not usually a good deal, but in the past year or so, when memory prices have started to skyrocket and the shortages during uh, COVID and everything, this is actually a pretty decent price for a 32 gigabyte kit, $119 for a 3200 gigabyte, uh, 3200 megahertz RAM, sorry, regularly $153, and it's a sleek, slim black design, pretty nice looking, should go into pretty much any build, uh, and yeah, 32 gigs is a nice sweet spot, honestly. 16 gigs is what most people say is, is standard, you know, really what you need. I personally prefer 32 for a gaming rig because some games will start to eke out a lot more memory, like Battlefield games. They like to really use the system RAM and, uh, you know, access that uh, quite a bit. Next up, we've got some solid state storage in the form of NVMe drives, which you can never have enough of, and it's always the time of year that I like to pick them up. This is a 970 EVO Plus from Samsung NVMe M.2 drive. It's a two terabyte drive for $199. Initially launched at $500, so you got $300 off there. They also have the one terabyte for $120. If you don't need as much storage, that's on sale as well. But I think the two terabyte is probably the best buy. And this is not their 970 Pro, so this isn't like the top of the line. It probably would, it wouldn't be fast enough to put into like a PlayStation 5, for example. But for a gaming PC, it's going to be plenty fast if you want it for game storage or even for your OS or whatever. Um, this drive is going to be absolutely fine. And unless you're using it for professional workloads where you need to be transferring large files all the time, it's going to be more than sufficiently fast uh, for you. The read and write is at 3,500 megabytes per second. So yeah, it's going to be fine. You're going to be able to move 3.5 gigabytes in a fucking second. Most people probably don't need much more than that. However, if you do, they've got the pro drives on sale as well. Um, and these, you, 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 you pretty much could go ahead and whack these into a PS5 if you need to, as they read, as they read at seven gigabytes per second, that's 7,000 megabytes, uh, and right at 5,100. And this two terabyte drive is 320, which is definitely a bit more pricey. It's marked down from $430 on sale for 320. But as I said, these are the pro drives. So, you know, they've got bigger caches on there. They can move much larger files much faster. Um, and if you need that type of speed, then the 980 Pro is uh, is going to be the way to go for you. You could also grab the one terabyte, which is for 170 um, which, you know, I find one terabyte is just barely be enough, though, for a lot of things, especially like games, like one terabyte. I could fill up one terabyte really quick with modern games. So I'd honestly go for the two terabyte drive if it was me. And before we get out of here, there's also some Amazon devices that I'm going to go ahead and recommend. Now, I have a Fire TV Stick 4K uh, in every television in my house. This is a this is basically the same exact model that I own, but with an updated controller. They, As you can see at the bottom, 
They added in some quick access things to some applications that you may frequently use, like Prime Video, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu, all applications which I use. But my controller does not have uh, those buttons built into it, but it's honestly not that big a deal. And these are half off now, 25 bucks. They're also extremely easy to jailbreak, so you can get tons of content uh, really at no additional charge if that's something you're willing to do. And as I said, there's tons of YouTube videos out there on it. Very, very easy. Takes about five minutes. And you'll have access to pretty much every movie and television show and live television in the entire world. So you can do that as well with these things for 25 bucks. Pretty nice. Uh, now there's also an updated model, which I do not have not personally used. But my understanding is that it's a little bit faster processing and it's also got Wi-Fi 6 support and that is the Fire TV Stick 4K Max. So this is the newest updated model of the 4K Fire Stick. Um, they do say it's 40% more powerful than the standard Fire TV Stick 4K, which, as I said, I haven't used it. But they claim that it's faster app startups and more fluid navigation, which if it's 40% faster, it probably would do, although the Fire Stick 4K is honestly absolutely fine. And it does support Wi-Fi 6, so you may get better Wi-Fi support through your house if you happen to be using Wi-Fi 6, although my router is upstairs in my office right here, just a few feet away from me, and we primarily watch TV downstairs, which is directly beneath my, my office here, and we've never had an issue streaming on that, so I don't really feel like we need to have the Max, but for 35 bucks, that's what that's on sale for. Maybe I'll go ahead and pick one up and then, you know, hand off my old one. Honestly, the main reason is because my the back of my controller, the ba the thing that covers the batteries, has started to has become loose and it slides off really easily. And I was kind of wanted to get a new controller anyway, and those are about 20 bucks if you want a replacement controller. So I may just end up going buy this for $35 if it's going to be a little bit faster. Eh, maybe. It's on sale. I haven't really made up my mind yet. Last up, something that we do use at my house, the Ring Video Doorbell, which is awesome. It's so cool. I love having the Ring Video Doorbell, being able to, like, you know, see people coming and going or uh, Amazon delivery drivers, you know, or FedEx or whatever and see how they handle the packages and everything. Um, really haven't had any, like, crazy, like, emergency issues or anything or chances to be able to use it, but I've seen tons of videos on YouTube of, you know, things that have been captured on Ring do Video Doorbells, and it's pretty incredible. Um, some of the things they, these things will see. Um, crimes, you know, whatever being committed, all that kind of stuff. And it, it just does add a, an extra level of security that makes me feel a little bit safer, uh, to have that on the house and it's on sale for 80 bucks. Uh, this is the newest generation one, and this is the easy install one, uh, right here, which means it's wireless and it has a rechargeable battery. So it's a lot more convenient in that way. If you don't already have pre-installed wiring for a doorbell on your house, this will be a lot easier, which is um, our, that was the case with our house. We didn't have a pre-installed doorbell, so I ended up going with the wireless rechargeable, and it is great. I love it. Now, if you do, if you can, if you do have the wiring for a doorbell on your house, and you feel a little bit more comfortable uh, installing one on your house, they have the previous generation Ring doorbell actually on a bundle right now. <laughs> really good deal, forty-two bucks, and it comes with an Echo Dot. And there was another one that was, I think, sixty-two dollars. And it came with the Echo uh, screen or whatever, like the little, like, it's like a little seven inch, like, screen and, like, Bluetooth speaker that you could, like, keep in your kitchen or whatever. But the Echo Dot is, is probably fine. We mostly use Google stuff uh, in our house. We have, like, a Google Home speaker and we have a Google alarm clock in our bedroom, but then we have a Ring doorbell. So I, I just think the Ring doorbells are probably the best ones out there. Um, I haven't really looked into every doorbell, but the rings seem to be the most popular and they're, like I said, I've never had an issue with the, the video quality on them is excellent. So I definitely recommend using them, uh, for your home security. If you're thinking about getting a video doorbell, I would just go with ring. I haven't used all the other ones, like I said, but the ring works great for me and, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So if you want to pick up any of the products we talked about in this video, links are going to be down in the description below. So be sure to go ahead and hit those up. They are affiliate links, which means I do get a very very small percentage of the sale when you buy it, like practically nothing. But, you know, over time it adds up and does help to support the channel, pay some bills and stuff and put food on the table for my family. So I would appreciate if you use those links, even if you don't buy anything specifically from this video that I talked about. Even if you, let's say you click on the link for the Instant Pot, but then you go over there and you buy some curtains for the kitchen, I'm still going to get a kickback on that because it stays in your cookies and technically I sent you to Amazon. So I even get a percentage of that. So even if you don't want to buy anything in this video, 
If you're buying anything on Cyber Monday, just go ahead and click on one of those links and then navigate to the thing you want to buy, and I'll still get a little bit of a percentage. So I would appreciate that. I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday, and I'll see you throughout the week for some more tech and uh, PC gaming and news content and all that kind of stuff. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And if you want to see some videos on the Instant Pot and those mashed potatoes, let me know. I'd be happy to make a batch uh, just to have a batch, let alone make a video about it and get to share it with you. So I'm going to get out of here. Hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you next time.